Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel Mstrip Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial for beginners, we're going to paint this gorgeous couple sitting on a sunset lake. I'm going to teach you how to blend and how to use warm colours to paint an easy sunset. How to create depths and distance using different colours to create forests and things in the background. How to create detail over the top to create ripples in your water and reflections. And you can paint this gorgeous sunset couple on the lake. So let's get into it. So a nice and easy tutorial today, you're going to need the following colours. There are titanium white, cad yellow, cad yellow deep hue, cad orange, rose pink, iris purple, cobalt blue, chromium oxide green, raw sienna, burnt umber brown, warm grey and ivory black. Now I've got a little canvas, I've just used pencil to create an outline. I've got um, just a little bit more water at the bottom than I have sky. We're going to paint a sunset at the top and we're going to have some clouds. And then we're going to have some pushback um, pastel warm forest just to create a lake in the background we're going to have a beautiful reflection from the sunset onto the water where we'll create some ripples and we'll just have a loving couple sitting on a dock so if you'd like to copy down the outline feel free to pause the video and you can copy it and we'll get started so like always we always start from the back of a painting and we work our way forward so we're going to paint the background sunset first so what I'm going to do I'm just getting a bit of white and I'm just trying to create an off center sunset so I'm just creating a little white circle where I'm going to have the sun and then I'm just going to get some cad yellow and all I'm going to do is add a tiny bit of white just to make it a little bit more pastel and I'm just going to go around that little circle that little white circle and all I'm going to do, I'm just going to speed the video up a tiny bit. All I'm doing, I'm using cad yellow and a little bit of white. And I'm literally just blocking in an area of the paint. Um, there's no real skill. It's just white and yellow. And all I want to do is reflect it on my outline. Now, if you've used pencil like me, don't be worried if you get a bit of a smudge. Because sometimes uh, the lead from the pencil creates a bit of a dark um, sort of stain on your canvas don't worry you can always paint over it the great thing with acrylics if you do get any um, of the black pencil going in with your yellow you can always paint over it again and it will go away so we've got the um, speed back down we're going to create a reflection so we're going to get the orange some cad orange loads of white and we're just going to get a little bit darker as we move away from the sun we're going to add a tiny bit of cad yellow and lots more white and we're going to try to create a peach color we add a tiny bit of brown burnt umber brown and gray is fantastic for sucking a bit of the color out of your colors so if you have something that is really really bright so i think that's still a little bit too dark so what we're going to do we're going to add lots more white to make it more pastel so by just adding white, you can make things lighter. Let's add some of this golden cad yellow deep hue, which is basically orange and, and, and lots and lots of yellow to get a golden color. So by just adding white, you can make things much more pastel. And what we're trying to do is if you imagine the sun, that little circle is really, really bright. Well, either side of it is going to get slightly darker. So all we're going to do is we're just going to block in our painting around this warm yellow. And the warm yellow is kind of going to be like the glow from the sun. And as the light sort of fades off, as it gets further away from the sun, we can just blend it. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just blending this sort of peachy color. I'm just going around. And whatever I'm doing in the sky, I'm trying to reflect in the water. So just think of that line just above the couple's head as a mirror. So all we're trying to do is reflect downwards. So I'm just adding a little bit more white to my pastel peach. And I'm going to add this color, which is called warm gray. Now warm gray is black, orange, and lots and lots of white. So I'm just adding a little bit of warm gray to my color. So just like brown, grays and browns suck the vibrancy out of colors. So if you want to make things less bright, and you don't want them as cartoony you can 
add a little bit of grey, just a, like a pinprick or a little bit of brown. And what it will do, just make the, your colours less vibrant and less harsh. So now I've got that colour, I'm just going to blend it, just go over it. So this is the great thing about acrylics, look, if you don't like a colour, you can always just paint over the top of it. It's not like oils where they all smudge together. Look, we can just paint over the colour, just make it a shade lighter, there's no bother. Now excuse my voice, I've got a stinking cold, so I sound really, really croaky. So excuse my voice if it sounds a bit deep and Barry White like. <laughs> So then as we go further away, we're just going to get a little bit darker. So we're going to add some more orange because we're getting further away from that light. And we're going to use this color called Iris Purple. Now, Iris Purple is a very cool purple. You can make this by adding cobalt blue, some pink and some white. So by adding look, purple, grays and browns to any color, we can make them darker. So pink, blue and white. You can make this iris purple. I tend to use cobalt blue because it's really, really cool. So adding some cool purple to the color look, it just makes it darker. And again, I'm just gonna speed the video up because all I'm doing is blocking in an area. There's nothing technical, there's no blending. I'm literally just blocking it in. Now I was going to leave gaps for my clouds, but then I thought, well, I can still see the pencil outline, so I may as well just cover them up, and then I'll paint over them in a minute. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to make the dot, the top end of our painting darker. I'm just mixing some more of that colour, because I've run out. And I want to do the exact same at the bottom. So if I've mirrored it at the top of my painting, I want to match the colour and do the exact same at the bottom. And we should, apart from this gap where I left for a cloud, we should have a nice sort of blended sky. So what we're going to do, we're going to start working on it. This is all dry. I'm going to start working on everything and start making it look much more realistic and pretty. So we've got everything blocked in. So let's get some cad yellow and a clean brush and just go around our sun to create a lovely glowing circle. So just some pure cad yellow. And what we're going to do, we're just going to start blending that, going around. So let's just create a glow. So really, really easy. Take your time. If you find the tutorials go a bit fast, you can always slow it down and pause the tutorial. And if you find that we go too slow, you can always fast forward. Go at your own pace. So I'm just going to add lots of white to that cad yellow. And I'm just going to start blending it. So we want to try to create a glow. So by using cad yellow and white, we can blend it into that bright cad yellow. So that glow. And then we can start blending it into the peach color. As I say, it looks a bit murky because we're really, really zoomed in and we're getting some of that pencil line. But don't worry, we can always paint over it. So look. If you get murky smudges, don't worry, just paint over it. That's why I tend in other tutorials to paint my canvas burnt sienna and use white chalk, because I don't like, especially when I'm doing something pastel, I don't like having black lead smudges on my paint. So I'm just adding a bit of cad yellow deep hue to make it more golden and still lots and lots of white. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit of brown. So again, just by adding burnt umber brown, Makes it a little bit darker. It's not as bright. So I'm just going to make an in-between colour. So because it's got a bit of um, gold in it, that cad yellow deep hue, it's not quite orange and it's not quite yellow. It's sort of in-between. And I'm just blending these two areas. Now you can use a blender brush. I'm just using a just a cheapy round heavy brush. But if you find it easy, you can buy these things called a blender brush, which are basically like a makeup brush. Let's just get rid of this gap where I had a cloud. And we'll paint it in in a minute. But it's totally up to you. What you really want to do, look, if we're creating this glow, you just don't want a big jump between colors. Look, we don't want where you can notice 
big jumps. So look, if you can see just to the left of that couple, there's a big jump between yellow and orange. So what we're doing, we're trying to blend areas by just look gently going back and forth, back and forth. Just rocking our brush, barely touching the canvas to just blend areas. Because this underpainting, when we put the clouds on top and we put all the bushes and we put the ripples on the water, by having it all nice and blended, we can trick the eyes. So when we put the detail over the top, it looks really nice and realistic, you see. So it's really important for you to take your time, don't rush. So let's add a little bit of orange, just heat her up. So we're just getting a little bit darker as we move away from the sun. So again, look, we're going from yellow to yellowy and orange to more orange and then eventually a darker, harsher orange at the top. So we're just blending it's the same trick. Look. And if you find you get streaks in your painting, um, that tends to be because you've got too much water on your brush. So if you ever get like really, really streaky marks on your canvas, try to thicken up the paint. It could be that you've just got too much water on your brush. You can always dry your work uh, by just letting it air dry or getting a hair dryer and then go over it with a second coat of paint. That tends to get all your streaks out. But as I say, if you just take your time, I know YouTube, everyone is so impatient and everyone wants to watch everything in five seconds and algorithms and all that stuff but you won't learn unless you do things properly so look i'm just noticing where there is jumps in my uh, work so where i can see them i'm just mixing some yellow and a white and i'm just trying to blend out areas so anywhere that i've got a little bit of streaky brush marks or anything like that i'm just going to neaten up so let's say this is all edited but if this takes you 20 minutes, it takes you 20 minutes. Don't fret. You don't have to keep up with the Joneses. Go at your own speed. So we should have a lovely glue. And it should be all nice and blended. So now let's put some clouds in our sunset. So we're not going to have anything harsh. I don't want to have anything really, really dark. So let's get some of this cool purple. And let's mix it to our peachy colour. And as you can see, it starts to turn grey. Can you see that? So that's how we make warm grey. So orange, purple, and lots and lots of white. Or orange, black, and lots and lots of white. You tend to get greys. So by adding the cool colour in the purple, or blues to orange, we'll make it kind of go like silver. You see that? So if you see, I've got all my warm colours on one side and I've got the cooler, darker colours on the other side. So we want it half orange, lots and lots of white to make it pastel and a little bit of purple. And it should turn it like a silvery grey. Now we'll try it out. It could be too cold. So I think there's too much white. It's too silvery. So if you think near that sun it's going to be quite warm still because it's getting really bleached by that sun so it's good to try it on your canvas if it doesn't work and remember acrylics always dry a little bit darker so it's better to go brighter and lighter so by adding more orange we can add more heat to the mix still quite gray but that orange will just make it warmer so that looks a bit better and let's just go over the top you would never know now, as I said to you, acrylics dry a little bit darker. So look, while I've put that on the canvas, you can barely see it. If you're watching on your phone or anything at home, you can probably not notice them. So if I zoom in and swap to a smaller brush, just so you can see a bit better. We just want to have the hint of clouds. We don't want anything really, really too harsh. But as I say, because acrylics dry darker, they will start to dry darker and they will look more harsh as they dry so at first we're putting down the paint and we're thinking oh you can barely notice that but don't worry so all i'm doing i tend to do my um 
clouds nearest the horizon, so nearest the sun, is kind of flat. So look, if we're near the sun, let's just have some breakaway ones. Let's just have some thin ones. And again, it's much easier to use a really small brush because you can get finer detail than using a big chunky one. So look, I tend to have them just going straight across, just all breaking apart. So there we go. And then as we go up in the sky, I tend to make them go more diagonal and make them more chunky and big. So now we've got that little one. Why don't we have a big one going sort of diagonally? So all I'm doing, I've got a small brush. I've got loads of paint on my brush. I'm just pushing quite harsh against the canvas. And I'm deliberately making them kind of bobbly and have bits look just odd bits breaking away. So can you see the ones on the left, how much darker they look to the ones on the right where the light is shining? They're starting to get darker as they dry. But if you ever paint too dark or too light, you can always paint over it, so don't fret. So let's just have some going diagonally up to the corners. So there we go. And it's a little bit more purple. And a little bit of this warm grey. And some orange. Now if you want to make a darker shade of grey, you can always just add a little bit more black. So I've got another grey there, which I'll show you. But look, if you go too dark, look how um, how much that brings it forward. Can you see that? We want to push this um, background really far off into the distance. So we want to have the couple kind of looking out into the distance. So we don't want to use really dark colours, like a dark grey. So by, look, by putting more white in the mix, look, we can just make it less harsh. So if you imagine, excuse me, I'm walking past the light. If, if you think the sun is down at the, um, at the horizon, so it's just a little bit more orange. So just a tiny bit more orange to warm her up. There we go, this is perfect. So we've got white, orange, and grey, and a tiny bit of purple. If you imagine that sun, look, it's at an opposite angle. All these clouds in the top corner would be getting hardly any sunlight. And they'd be a lot more darker. So think of a silhouette. They're almost furthest from the light source. So all I'm doing, I'm just going over the cloud shapes that I've just painted. And I'm just making the tops of them darker. So try to think where the light would be. And this is how you can get realism. And it's really, really obvious once you start to work it out. It's not hard. I'll show you an example with my hand in a minute to, to so you can grasp it. So look, all this area is going to be further away from the sun, so it's going to be a little bit darker. And the same look with these ones, just in this corner. So imagine that sun was a torch. All these bits and bolts would be getting less light. And as you move towards the sun, you just want to not use as much dark paint. So these ones are a little bit closer to the sun, but still this top corner, they'll be a bit darker. And with the darker color behind it in the orange, what it should do is frame your corners. And by having darkened corners, A, it looks more realistic, but B, it gets you to look past that couple towards the sun. So let's just blend it here. And then let's have a little one here just to make this corner look less boring. So there we go. So just have a little bits that are breaking away from the main parts. Look, you can have little tiny bits. They just look like little fluffy clouds. So around here is going to be a bit warmer. Now I think my paint is still wet, but this is just to show you by look, by adding warmer colors, so oranges, yellows, 
anything like that, warm colours. You can always go over some of the clouds. So I've just added some cad yellow deep hue and some orange to that grey. Look, you can always just colour in some of the clouds. And this looks like these ones are getting some of the sunlight. And all it is, is because it's got the orange in it, it just looks warmer. So all these tips of these clouds look would be getting bleached by the sun. So try to think where the light would be hitting them. You can just blend it with your finger. So you can see how that's tricking your eye? It's an easy trick. So all this area will be getting some of that lovely sunlight. All around here. Just to match that glow. And as it moves towards the right look and going upwards, it will just gradually fade out. So all I'm doing, I'm just blending it. Just pushing gently with my brush. So same here, this underneath would be getting a little bit of sun. So look, imagine my hand, look, the bottom would be getting sun. So if I had a lighter underneath my hand or a torch, look, the bottom would be getting all lit up. So the top half would be a little bit darker. So we, look, all we've got is warm at the bottom. So imagine this was a lighter and then above it would be all dark. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it's hard to describe. But once you realise this, you can apply this to any painting. So just think where the light would be coming from. And because the sun would be underneath these clouds, all their bottoms would be all getting lit up. All highlighted. There we go. So what I'm doing, I'm taking my time and I'm just blending... Sometimes I move uh, a couple of feet back and I just check everything's nice and blended. And as I say, look, if if you try to go too quick, look, I'm just going to get some yellow, some cad yellow, and things aren't dry. Look, watch. I like to leave all these little things in the tutorials to show you. Look, if that area is dry, look, you can go over it and it looks all blurred. But if it's not dry, look, you're going to get all mucky it's all going to go a bit rough. So just let your paint dry. If you want to change things, you can always dry the work and go over it. It's much easier. So I'm going to make some of the peachy colour that we made for the sky, which was uh, cad yellow, deep hue, orange and white. So I'm just going to try to make it up the best I can make it. Just add a little tiny bit of that warm grey. And all I'm trying to do is I've got a little fine liner and I'm just trying to make up as much of the um, sky colour. I should have saved some earlier, but I forgot. But, and what you could do, you could do this trick. So now you've got all your clouds blended, you can get a fine liner, a little thin brush, and you can always poke sky holes in your clouds. So look, by just matching the colour behind it, I can poke little holes and it looks like the sky is poking through the clouds. And this is a great way to make A, your clouds more realistic, but just to refine them. So if you've got in areas where your paint's just a bit scruffy and it's just splodged, you can just come back with a fine liner and you can just look, do what I'm doing. So it's so easy. But you want your clouds blended before you do this because now we're gonna poke the holes in you shouldn't really notice the jumping colour from the warm areas and the dark areas. Now, if you find that your acrylic paint dry uh, too quick, you can always use a, um, a spray bottle, what you uh, spray plants with. I tend to use one of these in the summer months. It's horrible and cold here in London, so you don't really need one at the moment. But if you find that your paints, especially acrylics, they dry really, really quick. You can always get one of these mist bottles and spray your palette um, every sort of like 10 minutes and it will keep your paints from drying out. And I think they literally cost like, 
a buck two two pounds max on something like Amazon so get yourself one of them so look I'm just poking some of these sky holes just to make my clouds look a little bit prettier but I don't want to go too detailed because this tutorial again is for beginners so I want to make it hard enough that you find it hard to follow along but it's doable you're not going to be really out of your comfort zone so now we've got this beautiful sunset all painted in our acrylic paints we're gonna um, we're gonna paint some of the trees so we're gonna make some orange and white so some cad orange and lots and lots of white please and we should get this lovely sort of pumpkin-y color so orange and white And again, if you use a smaller brush, it's much easier. And what we want to do, we want to create a glow around our trees. So if you imagine that sunlight is going to be absolutely bleaching those trees because it's so close to them. So they're going to get really, really nice warm colors as the sunlight is bouncing off them. So all I'm doing, I'm just making them all bright orange. And that should look like they're in the sunlight. Now try to make your trees look bobbly. Don't try to make them all one height. You don't have to put any detail. You just want sort of a shape of trees. But just try to have them bobbly and not all the same height. So look, all I'm doing, again, just like the clouds, I'm thinking where the light's going to be. So the light is going to be hitting that sort of outer edge. And then it's just going to get darker because the right hand side is going to be further from the sunlight. This area is going to be a lot darker than the left hand side. So now you can go from orange and you can add this color called raw sienna. Now raw sienna you don't necessarily have to buy. You can add brown and lots and lots of orange and you should get raw sienna. So brown and orange you should get raw sienna. You could always add a bit of cad yellow deep hue if you want it more golden. So don't worry if you haven't got access. I appreciate not everyone has the funds and the access to all these different color paints. So that's why I try to show people you can make them. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit more green to the mix. Now it should be very orangey brown, but just add a little bit more green to it. We'll just make it a little bit darker. And all I'm going to do, look, I'm leaving a tiny gap so that orange outline can still shine through and I'm just creating again the shape of trees but I'm leaving that look that really subtle orange outline and these are all the bushes and things that are getting a little bit darker now so that the sun is bleaching the outer edges and as it moves further from the sun it's getting a little bit darker so really, really easy. And we're just blending it as we move towards the left. So let's just cover up this area. Just go down to the line. Try to measure a flat horizon. So you can either use tape or you can use ruler, whatever you find easiest. And we're going to do the same here. So look, I'm leaving that orange outline. And I'm just colouring in the same block color now if you find all these tips and um, these techniques useful please like and subscribe the, to the videos um, by liking the videos it really helps the algorithm and it shows the videos to more artists so I'm just adding more green to the mix to get darker and we're gonna add some more darker gray now so darker gray is just black and orange and less white so black orange and less white so just only need a little bit and it should make it a lot darker as you can see still got a hint of that green and then look it should be a lot more harsh so as we move again to the left and the right I'm just going to make this area look like it's getting less sun now we don't want to use lots and lots of black because we still want to push this area back off into the distance 
So just remember like what we did with the dark clouds. We don't want to bring it really far forward. So by using not as harsh colors, we can still push this area off into the distance. Yeah, so if you find tips like this useful, please like and subscribe. Uh, there's over, I think, 160 step-by-step -step painting tutorials now on the channel. The channel hit over 16,000 subscribers um, over the week. Um, I'm just adding some cobalt blue just to make it darker, which you can't see on screen. Um, but just by adding a little bit um, cobalt blue, look, we're just making it a little bit more darker. Yeah, so thank you so much for the continued support and make sure to like and comment. But as you can see, look, we're really, really bright orange around the sun and then we're just getting darker. So by adding cobalt blue to some brown, orange and green, you can just make it more silhouetted. But it's not black, it's not as harsh. And it's the same over here. So let's make these trees a little bit wonky all different heights now if you were trying to mirror this just think to yourself how would you do this on the reflection you would literally do the exact same technique so it's not hard I'm just gonna get some of this warm grey just gonna add a little bit more orange to it and I'm just gonna Put in a further tree line but I think that's a bit harsh look see what I mean about darker colors it brings it forward we want to push it really fat into the background so it's a little bit more orange and white there we go so just by adding some white makes it more pastel so again this is just some faraway trees that these lovely couple can be looking out to there we go nice and soft yeah so think of a reflection we just kind of want to mirror what we've just done so you don't have to get it exact but you want to kind of just match the colors and if there's areas that go really far down you want to go really far down so all I'm trying to do is like match the shapes in the water so it's so easy look there's no big big shapes here just sort of blobs by by matching the color we can do that now I was gonna leave a gap and have sort of like a waterline but I don't think it will look as nice so I think we'll just fill it up in a minute so look all I'm doing look, I'm getting my orange and I'm trying to roughly recreate the sort of shapes in the water so it's so easy so just think of a mirror so it really, really helps to do the orange first. So just some bright orange, cat yellow, and a little bit of white, and create that outline. And then mix the raw sienna, and then add a little bit of green, and then add a little bit of that cobalt blue. So if I just block this area, as I say, let's just block it in, it will look nicer. Now, excuse the light, it's really horrible here in London. It's getting winter, and so I've got stinking cold. It's very dark and gloomy, so I have to use lights when I'm filming. So if there's a big jump in um, light, it's normally when a big rain cloud has gone over. <laughs> so look, all I'm doing, I'm just adding a little bit of that raw sienna, a tiny bit of green, and I'm just trying to recreate... So look, we've got warm, medium, dark, warm, medium, dark. So orange, and then orange, raw sienna, and a tiny bit of grey, or a little bit of green. And then eventually, the darkest colour is just by adding a little bit of cobalt blue and more green to your orange and raw sienna. So just try to match the reflection as best as you can. Now, a lot of these tutorials are ideas from um, viewers, so I, I came up with this idea, but a lot of the tutorials, like the one we did last week of the cactuses, um, 
and the desert scene was actually a viewer's idea so if you've got any um ideas for tutorials please feel free to put them in the comments below if there's any questions like what type of brushes i use or any techniques or where i get things or anything like that again just put them in the comments below so there we go so look now we're zoomed out that's starting to look really realistic and i'm going to get a dry brush a totally clean dry brush i'm going to get some cad orange and some cad yellow deep hue and some white now my brush is completely clean and completely dry my painting is dry and all i'm going to do look i'm just going to go over the top and blend it on this dry paint so please dry your painting before you do this and I'm just going to create look, a warm glow. So think of a crayon. I've literally, I'm just colouring in something. And I'm, look, I'm just easing off to blend it into the darker shade. And what that should do is create a lovely warm glow around the sun. So you can do a little bit here on the forest and waterline. Look, you can even outline it to make it look like it's glowing in the sunlight. So... Again, by making sure your painting is all nice and dry and having a lovely clean brush, you can't you can't make a mistake, you can't get all dirty and sort of make a smudge. So let's just make this area a little bit of a glow, because it's getting a little bit of the sun. And it should look really, really pretty. Now if you want, if you are feeling advanced, you could do some little sky holes in between your trees. I'm not going to, because as I say this is for beginners. But if you wanted to put a little bit of gaps in your trees just to have a little bit of the sky shining through them, you can do. So all I'm doing now, I've just got a clean brush. I've just got some yellow, some cad yellow. And I'm just going to create a glow and the same on the reflection for my sun. So all I'm doing with this really soft brush, I'm just blending some yellow. I've got hardly any paint on my brush. And then I'm just going to get some yellow and white. So yellow and white barely any paint on my brush look i'm going to wipe most of it away and i'm just literally blending areas just to create that glow just around that tree line by making it nice and soft and a little bit lighter in color it just makes the orange stand out against it so really really easy take your time so there we go so we've got this lovely glow and we've got this lovely pushback um, lake. So now we're going to create some ripples. Now, for some reason, my camera decided to turn itself off. But all I did, if I show you here, was I used a flat brush, which is totally flat. We used it in many of the tutorials to create waves. And all I did was create ripples. So look, by going across and just creating lines, like I'm doing now. And all I did, look, I used a dark color and I just got less ripples as I moved up. So I used quite thick paint at the bottom. And as, as I got up towards the horizon, I hardly did any ripples. I've got very sharp lines. They're very thin. And it just looks like it's fading off into the distance. Now the color I used was the same color as the clouds. So all I did was mix that same color, which was purple, orange, and a little bit of gray and lots and lots of white and if you want to make it darker at the bottom so look if I show you now all you do is you just add a little bit more gray look and you just use that sharp edge of that flat brush and again just by darkening the corners remember we're going to sign it at the bottom so we want our left hand corner to be dark you can just make it look a little bit more dark and away from the sunlight so sorry it didn't record, and I have no idea why it did that. And the problem is I can't go back. It's the joys of painting and filming at the same time. Now if you have um, any like problems with um, doing it, you can always dry your work first and have some baby wipes handy. And then if you make a mistake and you go a bit heavy handed or anything or you make a smudge, you can always wipe away these these ripples and you're still your lovely underpainting that is all blended will still be there. 
So I always recommend before you attempt doing the ripples, if you dry your work with a hairdryer, and then if anything goes wrong, you can always just wipe away anything. And try, look, I'm just going right up to the edge of this dock. Try not to have any gaps in the water. So look, I'm going right up. I'm just using that sharp edge of the brush just to color her in. And then let's get some raw umber brown and some orange. So raw umber brown and orange. And a little bit of cobalt blue. So raw umber brown, orange and cobalt blue. And in the middle, we're just gonna create this nice sort of cool brown. So let's go around her bum, around his bum. And we're just gonna block in our jetty, our sort of dock. Now, if you imagine the sunlight is coming from the left-hand side, so it's gonna be coming over the lady's shoulder. So let's mix two colors. Let's have a cooler shade. Let's add more purple for the right-hand side. So if you imagine on his shoulder, so think of yin and yang, one side's gonna be cool and one side's gonna be warm. So I'm just gonna use some more purple on the right-hand side. I'm just blending it into that previous color. So there we go. And then I'm gonna clean my brush once I've finished blending. So it's not got loads of purple on it. And I'm gonna do the complete opposite. I'm gonna get a warm color, like orange, for my warm pile, and just add it to the brown. And I'm just gonna make this outer edge warm. So if you imagine, look, it's the same trick over and over and over again. Like, so think of the tree line, think of the clouds, now on the jetty, on this dock. It's the same trick. We're using one side warm, with warm colors. One side is cool. And then it looks all 3D. So again, just blend it. And then when we put the detail over the top, it'll be all nice and blended underneath. So there we go. Look at that. Easy peasy. So now if we zoom out and it's all blended, why don't we do the same with the people? Now I struggled a little bit with the people. As I say, I've got stinking flu at the moment and I don't feel particularly great. And I was really, um, I don't know, just not in the mood for some reason. But what I was trying to do, I'm using the, the, the warm colour, which is orange and brown, on the left hand side. So all these part of her hair is getting the sunlight. Yeah, and I think because I was doing this out of my imagination, I haven't really got a reference photo. Let's use the cool colour on the left, uh, excuse me, on the right. Yeah, because I haven't really got a photo to use as a reference, I was kind of struggling because when you're trying to think of things out of your head rather than actually look at something, sometimes you can sort of question yourself and you can overpaint something where you can go back and forth too many times. So try to have a reference photo. I know with painting along with a tutorial it's a lot easier because you can copy me but if you're painting your own things try to find a reference photo problem is with london there's not really many lovely lakes to go and sit by you can sit by a canal <laughs> or a dock probably with a body flying past <laughs> like something horrible in the water but yeah there's not too many lovely sunset lakes you have to go further out away from london so let's get some pink and let's paint her little vest top. Let's get some cobalt blue and some pink. So you can see, look, pink and cobalt blue makes that purple. You see? So if you ever yeah, watch my videos and you're like, how do I make that purple? You can always add some pink and cobalt blue. And you can add a tiny bit of grey to it. Let's just block in her vest. This could be a nice summer's day. 
So again, it's much easier if you're painting along at home to, if you're doing anything with fine detail, to use smaller brushes. So you can buy um, just multi-packs of brushes that don't cost a lot. Um, if you, uh, what's it called? Go to most art shops, you can buy a pack of multi-packs which have different types of brushes for literally like five pounds or five dollars. So you don't have to spend a lot. I'm using these Zen Art um, paint brushes that I really love. Um, but I work with Zen Art and I have a Amazon affiliate with them. So when people buy one, I get a little percentage from them because I use them all the time and they're fantastic. But you don't have to buy them, obviously. And you don't have to... I think they're fantastic, but you can buy it. If you're learning at the beginning, as you get better, you might want to invest in better brushes. So all I'm doing, I'm mixing a grey blue for the gentleman. So I'm going to have her more warmer and I'm going to have him darker. I think I've made his head a little bit too small. <laughs> we'll fix that later. He's got like a little tiny potato head, hasn't he? <laughs> So we can fix that later on. So what I'm trying to do, I'm mixing um, blue, grey and white to create sort of a dark grey. So let's just cobalt blue and white. Now you can use a little bit of this pinky purple. And you can use some of that grey. And you can use a bit of a shade on her. So if she's, again, just like the dock, by using sort of cool colours on the right and leaving the warm colors on the left it's just implying where the sunlight is hitting so if I zoom out so you can see so let's get some white and then let's get some cobalt blue we should get a nice cool pastel blue So there we go. And then let's just put some highlights on his uh, left hand shoulder. So again, it's just thinking where the light's coming from. So the light would be sort of coming between the, the couple, sort of hitting his shoulder. Now this was the bit I was kind of finding hard, was trying to think without a reference photo where this light would be. Because your back would be getting hardly any sunlight, wouldn't it? It would be kind of silhouetted. So I kept going back and forth thinking, should I do it darker? Should I do it lighter? I kept getting in my own head. What I should have done, there's a little trick that you can do sometimes. Is literally take a picture of yourself and then use it in landscape paintings. So if you want to add a person and you're unsure how to draw them from memory or like from your head, you can always ask one of your family or one of your friends to sit down and take a photo from them from like this couple and then use them as a reference photo, which I should have done. Damn it. <laughs> so that's a good way to do it. And you can even put them into black and white and use them as a stencil. Ha ha ha. So I'll teach you that one week. That's a fantastic thing. Is to take photos when you're out and about. And then you can always turn your photos black and white. And then make them into stencils. So if you're ever painting something that's quite hard. So I'm just blending this highlights with the dark. So I've got the very dark on his right sh shoulder. And I've got a medium grey in the middle and a light bluey white on the left hand side. Yeah, if you're ever painting something really hard, so think of something like the London Eye. It's very, very hard to paint by memory or by um, on your own. You can take a photo, turn that photo black and white, and then use it as a stencil. So I'll do a video on that for everyone. Because if you're if you're painting something very complex, sometimes stencils are a great way to plan a painting out and to get it all precise and perspective and all that. 
So as I say, I kept going back and forth, not thinking if I'm going to make him really dark or not. So the other thing, while his back is drying, if we get some orange and we mix it into our purpley color for her top, if you think that this orange glow that's on the um, her hair, we can do that on her top. So again, by just warming it up, we can just make her side look like it's sort of gleaming in the sunlight. And then why don't we get some of this dark gray? So it's black, orange, and white. And then let's just make the outer right hand side of her hair a lot darker. There we go. And then the same on him. As I say, I think I need to make his head bigger. I think his head is a little bit too small. It's the angle he's sitting at. I don't think it sits quite right, so we'll fix that in a minute. And I'm just going to outline his body because this area will be getting almost silhouetted, wouldn't it? Be very dark. And while we've got that colour, why don't we just give them both matching trousers? <laughs> So let's just use that dark grey to colour in the bums. So here we go. So again, just block it in. If you have a little gap between the couple, like here in the middle where their hands are sort of um, locking, sort of like interlocking, we can use some of the background paint and we can put that in in a minute. So don't worry about that. So you can have their knees sort of rubbing together. So let's just do this bit here. There we go. Make her a bit more curvy. There we go. Much better. So let's mix some skin colour. So let's get some white and some orange. Now, if you're painting along at home, you don't have to do a couple like I'm doing. You could always do your own family, or your wife and your husband, or your partner, whoever it is. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. But I'm just mixing some orange, white, and a tiny bit of grey. But I think this is going to be a little bit too light. So we'll try it out. Yeah, so you can always paint who's closest to you. So Christmas is coming up ages and ages ago. I did um, a couple at a beach for Valentine's Day, which went down really, really well. You can always, as I say, do someone that's very special in your life. You don't have to do a man and a woman if you don't want to. Do whoever you want. So I'm just going to add a little bit more orange and a tiny bit of purple just to make it a little bit darker because they are further from the sun so I'm just going to make their skin colour a little bit darker. So there we go, let's just do her shoulders. We can have her sort of holding his hand, why not? Holding on to his arm. Let's block in his weird shaped head, his potato head. <laughs> yeah. There we go. He hasn't really got a neck, has he? He's got a really big body, not much neck. So let's just do this arm. And then let's just add a tiny bit of catch yellow deep hue and just give her shoulder just a little bit more colour. There we go. Now, with acrylic paints, sometimes, especially when you're painting something and you want really 
vibrant and bright you sometimes you just got to do it twice so if you find it dries a little bit flat and you want to brighten up an area you can always just go over it and look all i'm going to do i'm just going to get match some of the background sky and just put his shoulder back in i'm just going to try and neaten this area up so i'm just using some of that blue as i said I couldn't decide if i want him to have a shirt or whatever if i'm going to do him really dark so I'm just mix up some background colour and I'm just look where there's holes in between their arms. I'm just trying to match it. So exactly what we did with the sky. If you find you've got a little bit of canvas showing or you want to just refine things, just try to do it to the best of your ability. It doesn't have to be exact. Look, that colour is not really probably the same colour, but it's pretty close and your eyes won't really notice when you're far away from it. So anywhere you've just got a little bit of canvas showing or if if your straight lines are a bit wonky for your dock you can use tape i use painting tape sometimes but i actually painted this quite freehand which i was quite surprised at but trying to draw a straight line is very very difficult so if you find that if you're trying to draw buildings or anything like perspective like the dock you can always use sort of sellotape like sort of um painting tape that comes off your painting quite easily and you can always um, use it to um, and paint alongside it or paint alongside a ruler or an envelope to give you a straight edge. So I'm just outlining her very, very subtly. And then what am I doing here? I can't see. I've zoomed in too close, I'm afraid. I'm mixing some orange and yellow, I can see. <laughs> Aha, I know what I've done. Right, so I've got some orange and white and a tiny bit of yellow and I'm going to create a nice glow around her head. So imagine, see the far off bushes that we've done near the sun. We're doing the same on her body and her head on her head. So by creating a nice glow, we can sort of frame the couple and make them stand out against the background. So all I'm doing, look, if the sunlight's coming down, it'll be coming down on her head and her left shoulder. So by using white and a little bit of orange and a tiny bit of yellow, and then going from that color into bright orange and a little bit of white. So just like what we did with the bushes, So we're just trying to create a glow and then let's have it going down her shoulder and her top. So it's easier to put the couple in first and then put these highlights and things on and then just once you've got them on neaten everything up afterwards because you know where everything's going to be. So sometimes it's a little bit back and forth but it does work. So I'm just going to smudge it a little bit, just so it creates like a glow on his shoulder. And then we can refine it afterwards. So I'm just going to get some of that raw sienna. So imagine white and orange into orange into raw sienna. So raw sienna, look, it's just a little shade darker. It's like a warm brown. And then that should create like a nice glow. So let's do the same on his shoulder. Oh God, I've smudged it a bit too much. As I say, I think I was all in my head today. I've got man flu. <laughs> Men aren't very good with flu, if you, if you know, if you're a lady. We're a bit of wimps. So I'm just mixing some blue with that raw sienna. Just to create a nice sort of silver colour. So I'm just putting back in his shirt. So still got that glow. Like you can see the glow. But it's just a little bit neater. Because I was really struggling with him today. But I try to leave all these things in the tutorials. Because I want to show people like everyone. Sometimes in a painting some things go wrong. So look. All I'm doing is going over things twice to make them look more vibrant. Things do go wrong. Even if you're like like me and you do this all the time for a living, sometimes you're just not feeling it. It can be hard. 
But the secret is perseverance. The secret is to just keep going. Maybe go for a walk. Take your dog a walk or something. Or go do something different for half an hour and then come back to it. So I'm just using that raw sienna. So I think I should change the shape of his head. I think his head... So let's just try and draw a face. Let's try and work this out. So let's say... I try and leave these things in here so you can see it's not just you at home. Everyone has a boo-boo. And if I edit all these things out, there'll be big jumps in the tutorial and you'll kind of think, what the hell is going on? So I kind of try to leave these things in. But I think because they're genuine and you can see they're realistic. So I'm just getting some grey and some raw umber. You can see yourself at home. If you're making mistakes, that everyone does. We live in an age where everyone seems perfect on social media and everything is done first time and all that. It's just not realistic. It's uh, like a parody of real life. So there we go. So his head looks weird, doesn't it? <laughs> He's kind of got a sloth from the Goonies head at the moment. So let's try to rescue him. The good thing is, look, you can always change it. I think it's the angle. As I say, not having a reference phone can make your life a lot more harder than it has to be. So look, you can always get a clean brush and get some of the skin colour, look, and just try to change the shape. So that looks a bit better, doesn't it? Just give him more of a chin and a neck. Give him an ear, that might help. <laughs> there we go. I still don't really like it. Oh well. So let's say I was really struggling with him. So I've got some cool blue, which is uh, blue, cobalt blue, uh, lots of white, and a little bit of purple. Just make this lovely cool blue, which I was just putting down on the left hand side of him. And then I think we need to darken him up. So let's get some dark grey. And let's make this a lot darker. With a fine liner. Let's make his collar pop. Let's make his back darker. So I just shade him in with dark grey. Going into that blue. That looks a bit better. And same with her, let's just make her stick out a little bit more, she's too flat. Now, I left this part of the video in because I thought it was funny. I tried to draw his face, so like I gave him a little eye and nose and stuff, but then he still looked just awful. <laughs> and he looked just rubbish. So, I thought, right. Let's just make him blank. Let's just, so I'm just going to outline his body. I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to stick his face with some uh, that sort of beigey colour. Let's just delete him. Because I was trying everything. I was going to give him a beard even, some sunglasses. And I thought, no, do you know what? Sometimes you're just flogging a dead horse, let's so just colour over him. That is the fantastic thing about acrylics, look, you can just change anything. And that kind of looks alright. Well hey, his head is better, that looks better. So now, I'm very very happy, I'm going to go over my orange and white with my fine liner. So now I've got my couple, finally, finally, sorry about the weight. All all done. I'm just going to make sure everything starts to pop now. So I was getting my orange and white. I was going over his shoulder and her shoulder. And I was using the fine liner just to create a glow around their faces and their heads. So it's like sometimes with painting you've got to feel your way out. You've got to basically just keep going with it till you figure it out. And then once you come back, look, everything starts to click. So start going at a bit of speed again now. So let's get some orange. Let's put some highlights on his side. 
I still think his back should be darker. So let's color in his back with some gray because he is going to be getting hardly any sunlight, especially on the side of his back. So let's just darken him up and let's do the detail on the dock while he's drying. Why don't we do that? So everything's back to normal now. We've got his face all in, so I'm happy with that. So let's draw some lines on the dock. So all I did was I got a pencil and just measured some lines. And I don't mind if they're quite wonky. It actually adds some charm to our dock because they're kind of rickety. So all I did was I just measured some lines. And then I just got a fine liner. And I got some black and some dark blue. So some black and some cobalt blue. And all I did was I tried to create a line that going around the edge. If you want to use a ruler, try to use a ruler. As I say, if you make sure your painting is dry before you attempt this, if you do make a mistake, you can always wipe it away. So just try to go really, really steady. I've got a pretty steady hand. Look at that. It's pretty good. And if it is a bit wonky, don't worry. As I say, you do get gaps between the planks. So, oh, well, that's not too bad. I'm not shaking or anything. Apart from the end there, where I sort of whacked into my easel. <laughs> well, look at that. So there we go. And then let's do some just little rickety bits here. There we go. But can you see, because we've got the blended colour underneath, one side's orange and one side's more purpley. Oh, God, that was wonky. Well, I think I was looking at a bump. <laughs> <laughs> I was going, going really wonky there. Never mind. Yeah, because we've got the blended under colour, it should look quite realistic. Why not? Let's get some of that Payne's... Well, it's not Payne's grey. It's, it's, it's black and blue, which kind of makes Payne's grey. So let's just darken up her bum here. Because that would be really in the shade. And do the same on him. But the problem, look, if you use too much black, it kind of makes things look cartoony. Can you see that? So we don't want to use too much. So what we'll do is we'll put it on first. Because we do want a harsh silhouette to bring them forward. But it does look a bit cartoony. So we'll put it on first and then we'll mix it with some dark grey. So it's not as harsh, I think. So I'm just using this black and cobalt blue just to outline his outer shoulder here. Let's put a little bit on his elbow just to tie him in. Just blend it slightly. You can see, look, look, it makes it look cartoony. It look, makes it look too harsh. In nature, you don't see things that harsh, do you? It's like the contrast is really high up. So let's just do the top of his head. Just to give it a nice dark border. The same with her. There we go. And as I say, because it's a little bit harsh, why don't we get some... Actually, let's put some... While well, I've got that colour, let's just put some little dots to create some rickets in our planks. So these could be sort of grooves in the, in the wood. Little nails and things. So just a little added detail. You don't have to do this at home if you don't want to. Just little dots. But again, if you use a tiny brush, it's so much easier. Yeah, I think they're just a little bit comic-y. So why don't, now I zoomed out, why don't we just get some of that dark grey. So some black, white, and a little bit of orange. So it's not as harsh. And let's just blend that. So you've still got a nice dark outline on the right hand side. So a nice dark edge. But then it goes into the grey and it's a little bit softer. There we go. 
See how I'm doing that? So I've still got that nice dark outline, but I'm just using some of that dark grey just to take it away. It's not as harsh. Best of both worlds. There we go. And then now it's finally dry. Let's get some white and a tiny bit of yellow, but predominantly white. And let's create a glow going around her. So if you imagine the right hand side is really dark, we're doing yin to the yang. We're creating white and a little bit of yellow going around his nice shape of his face now and his neck and his shoulder to create a glow. So we got there in the end, didn't we? And we can even put a bit on his head. So we just can blend that. So white and yellow going into orange and white. So take your time with the glow. Use a really thin brush, it really helps. Do the same on his head. Here we go. His shoulder. Just to tie all this area in. And then we can put a little bit of orange or a little bit of that raw sienna just to blend it, just so there's not so much of a jump. There we go. and blend that into the, the grey. We're starting to work now. So let's just finish her off. So let's get our flat brush and get some of that dark purpley grey, which was um, dark grey, purple. You can use uh, raw umber and a little bit of orange. You just want a very dark grey. And then we're gonna swap to our flat brush. And we're just gonna make some of the ripples a bit harsher at the bottom. So look, all I'm doing is creating lines with my flat brush. Just clean it a little bit. So I want to make the bottom of my painting a little bit darker because it's first away from the sun. And obviously I want to darken up my corners to get you to look towards the sunset. So just by using a little darker grey, I can just make some of these ripples a little bit harsher. Look. Anyone who's watched the um, tutorials about waves, this is how we do it. So there we go, really easy. So just create some lines. Just, we just want them fading off into the distance. And then all I'm gonna do, I'm just using the fine line. I'm just trying to match the color in the um, tree line. All I'm doing is just creating some zigzags below it just to look like reflections in the water. So sometimes you just get these sort of little swirls underneath the tree reflections to make it look like that they're sort of shimmering in the ripples of the water. So look really easy. Just create some lines. Just try and match the colour to the best of your ability. It's orange, green, and a little bit of cobalt blue. And then you could do the same with your um, sun. So all I've done is just got some pure titanium white just create a little circle for my sun and I'm just trying to create some zigzags underneath just so it looks like the water is shimmering in the sunlight so it looks like that light is sort of bouncing off the shimmer on the ripples coming down towards the lady so just little finishing touches really make the painting oh it's looking really realistic now it's looking cool and let's just get some raw umber brown and just paint in the hair a little bit just tie everything together so raw umber brown is still quite uh, warm because it's brown it's not as dark as blue and, and blacks so because we're jumping from orange to these dark greys you can use a little bit of this raw umber brown just sort of tie the areas together and when you're happy with her I think she's pretty much finished so why not let's put her on a nice easel and take a photo so there we go so i've signed her in the bottom corner 
So we've got this lovely glow. So you've learned how to paint a sunset of a lake in acrylic paints. So really, really easy. We've got this lovely glow around our trees to create warmth. We've got the glow fading off into the dark. We've got the sunset where you've learned how to go from lighter colors into medium colors, how to darken your corners, how to create ripples and sunset clouds. So you've got flat clouds and you've learned how to do light on them and highlights and shadows. And then we've got these lovely ripples in our water that pushes it back into the distance. And then we've used darker colors with the, um, the dock and the couple to give them harsher shadows and highlights to bring them more close to you. And we got there in the end with his funny head. <laughs> but we painted this gorgeous couple. So it's a nice family scene for people at home. So my name is Murray. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the channel M Short Paintings with your versions. You can tag me at M Short uh, Paintings with your versions of the tutorials um, on Instagram. And see you soon. Happy painting, guys. See ya. Bye.